We've got a high tide at Littleton at eight minutes past five, uh, which will give us roughly about an hour before it gets to here. Water just picks the lowest point, which unfortunately at this stage is the streets. So these are the exposed roots of these two trees, which have washed a lot since we've been here. So it's probably gone back three metres, washed out, but uh, you know, that's nature. We've had the perfect storm uh, on three occasions over the last two years. What that means is that you get a high tide, you get high rainfall, and then you get a, a pretty violent wind coming from the other side of the estuary. And what that does is force the water against uh, the water edge here, and then the water is driven up into the houses. We've had about 21 centimetres of sea level rise over the last century. After that, it's not so much that there's disagreement, but there are different scenarios based on what we do as humans in terms of our interaction with the atmosphere. So there's potential to change our future. South Shore is a quite an unusual community because if you live here, you live here for a pretty strong reason. You know, it's not just a house somewhere in the suburb. I mean, you have the beach and you have the estuary with its bird life and it's so sometimes because we go in the daytime, there's, there's no one else there. Do you think, how is this? So all this land had houses, sometimes two deep, sometimes one deep. There was a big two-storey house, pretty solid because you couldn't see through it or anything. And then on the other side, there was another big two-storey house. Um, we basically couldn't see the estuary. It's certainly a plus-plus for us. Some people were right by the estuary. Sometimes the high tide lapped their, the edge of their property. What we're looking at here is, is the ruins of the seawalls that used to be here. Most of them were actually built by the property owners that used to live here, the households, which are now all red zone. So when the government took over the red zone, they didn't feel any responsibility for maintaining these seawalls. And likewise, the city council said, well, the problem really is caused by what happened on the red zone. So that, that's created a real problem for us as a community, because uh, now the water just comes up. If we look across the estuary on the other side there, they've put in a big seawall, full length, and it's all hard rock. Beach Hall has a deep navigation channel that the, you know, the Otties and all that use, it. so they can have pretty violent storms over there, I'd imagine. So this is a hard rock solution. Uh, the solution for South Shore might, it probably would be a lot different. The cost of a sea wall along here, um, including South Brighton, so uh, you know, two and a half, three kilometres of seawall, that was estimated by the City Council about a year ago at $37 million, and that would give um, protection for the next 50 years, essentially. Hello. Do you support the boom? I do, definitely. I haven't heard any other proposals um, yet that appear to be any better than that. We can look at a seawall from a physical point of view and we can make an assessment as coastal scientists. It's not a terribly viable option for this sort of situation. The seabed of the estuary changed. Two thirds got uplifted, one third subsided. And that now means that the water coming in and out of the estuary is at an imbalance with the bed of the estuary. So the Napier coast is still responding to those earthquakes in the 1930s. It does take decades and decades for a coast to adjust finally. It's a complex scenario. It is definitely a complex scenario. Yeah. The earthquake has, has in fact increased our awareness of our vulnerability. Anecdotally, I haven't heard of anyone being absolutely refused insurance, but what happens is that the premiums go up. What gets really hard for people though is if they're building a new house here, um, there's quite a complex process of resource consenting and uncertainty and extra costs involved for that. There's more than just the physical elements to look at here. There's the pros and cons for a community and the values that they have for this area. This is one of my favourite little walks through here. I do worry. I worry for ourselves and for the people who are incoming, investing in new properties and for their future.
This erosion and flooding is just a tiny part of a bigger picture that includes multiple current and future hazards, but also multiple resources for a dynamic coastal environment like New Brighton Spit. And what we've got to do is put those two things together, the resources and the hazards, and as a community come up with a future vision for Christchurch's coastal environments. It's just one of those natural occurring things we get two or three a month. Unfortunately, we can't control nature. You're getting more and more confident tonight. It's not going to be a problem, is it? No, that's no. It doesn't appear to me. No.